Most people believe that picking the right stock determines your success in investing. But in reality, one of the most important parts of investing, perhaps the most important part besides starting early is asset allocation. To discuss the importance of asset allocation, today we have with us Mr. Satish Menon, the Executive Director, Geojit. Welcome, Mr. Menon. Let's begin with what is asset allocation and why it is important. Okay. Thank you. Before we come to asset allocation, when we start with uh, the idea of securing our financial life, the first thing you need to do is to buy an insurance. Anybody who has a liability or dependence, the first thing you, you, one needs to do is to buy an insurance. Then you come to asset allocation. Asset allocation means allocating your free surpluses to certain asset classes, which I will come in sometime, to get your dreams being fulfilled. Basically, you put in money into different asset classes. Asset classes can be many, many things like real estate, uh, debt instruments, it could be bank FD, PPF, it could be equities, so and so forth. So asset allocation means what kind of or what percentage of your available surplus or what percentage of your net worth is put into different asset class. It is very important for one to understand how to put money into different asset class. Of course, the first thing is depending on your risk profile. If you are a person who could take some risk, a certain percentage of your net worth goes into little bit riskier asset classes like equities. If you are a person who is absolutely risk averse, wherein your allocation to equities, which I said is little bit risky, is bare minimum, then your higher percentage goes to fixed instruments. It is Like I said, it is very important for you to reach your goals. If your goal is to have a certain kind of money for any goal, for example, it could be your retirement, it could be your children's education, so on and so forth. If your goals are beyond what you can save and earn, then your asset class, asset allocation should be proper. There is no point in saying that you have only 2% of your net worth in equities and your net worth has remained the same over the last 10-15 years. If your wants are higher, if your goals are little bit beyond what you think today it is, you need to have a higher allocation to equities. A normal way, a thumb rule of doing asset allocation is 100 minus the age is what we put in equities. When I say equities, it need not be direct equities, it can be equity mutual funds. But this is not the most scientific way of doing it. The most scientific way of doing it is understanding your risk profile understanding what risks you can take with your money, what will happen if you lose some money in the next uh, immediate term. All these things defines your risk appetite. If your risk appetite is more, you put a larger percentage of your money into little bit more riskier instruments like equities. And like I said, if your risk appetite is not there, then you put into fixed instruments. Which, is, which will be PPF or FDs or bank deposits. I do not consider real estate as an asset class. Real estate as an instrument, though in Indian standards, of course, you need one house to stay and uh, uh, maybe that will continue for some time. So, one house for you to stay when you are alive is okay as an asset class, but that should not be taken as an instrument for securing your financial future. So, asset class and real estate also, it is, it is less transparent, it is, uh, it is not so easy to liquidate when you need it. So, I do not consider real estate as a typical asset class. For me, when I consider asset class, it is typically between fixed instrument, which could be FDs, BPF, banks or equities. It could be direct equities or mutual funds. Gold, of course, is also an asset class. Uh, especially in India, especially in South of India also, where people have a, have a little bit more affiliation towards gold. Uh, so, gold also can be a certain percentage of asset class, all depends upon your risk profile. Uh, you said about the risk profile, but what about uh, your investment time horizon or uh, your uh, income per se? How do you think that defines asset 
uh, allocation? See, the time horizon is important. Uh, income, uh, of course, um, is the natural product from where you will do some investments. We always tell people in your beginning stages of earning, it is better to spend after investments rather than investing what is left yeah. after spending. Because in the initial years, what you spend, what you invest gives you that compounding returns. So the advice to everybody who is just started earning is to be financially secure by taking care of your future finances by investing today. If you have money to invest, it is always better to keep your timelines clear. Everybody has goals and goals have a time horizon. For example, somebody who is 30 years old and he wants to retire at say 55, you have a time horizon of 25 years. When the time horizon is more, it is always advisable to put money into equities or equities mutual fund. Larger the time, the risk becomes lower, which is seen in equities. If you see the last 20 years of equity mutual fund returns, that is the diversified funds, it has given a compounded return of around 18 percent, which means basically your money doubles every four years. Of course, it does not double every four years. You will see spurt sometimes, downward sometimes. But mind you, such a, gro such a returns has its own risks. Equities are always suggested when your horizon is five years plus. Longer the horizon, the most best, best chances for you to make money in equity mutual fund. If your horizon is lesser, that means if you need money in the next three years or five years, you will recommend a debt mutual fund or something to do with debt. So, depending on your time horizon, your allocation can differ, but initial question still remains your risk profile. Even if your horizon is more, but you do not have the capacity to see a downturn in the equity market for six months or one year, then it is not advisable to put in equities. Then of course, your goals have to be tempered. You cannot wish for an 18 percent growth. You will have to be happy with say 7 percent growth or 8 percent growth. Mind you, 18 percent or 7 percent, 8 percent is before inflation. After inflation, it comes to 2 percent, 2 percent and 10 percent. So, there is nothing in this world and history has shown us and I do not see why the future would be different where equity as an asset class beats all other instruments in returns. Longer the horizon, much better appetite you have to take risk. So, could you tell us, uh, give us a few examples maybe you know about various asset classes and returns that you can get so that our viewers get a better idea of. Good. So, like I told you equities, even if you had put money into an index fund or you have just bought the Sensex, 20 year return is 15 percent. If you had put money into a diversified equity fund, average return is 18 percent. When I say 18 percent, it doubles in 4 years time. If you had put money into an FD, where the returns would be what 7.75 percent for the last 20 years, your returns in PPF would be 8.25 percentage. In the last 20 years, your gold return would be 20, uh, 10 percent. So, you see the difference. Maximum gold in the last 20 years, 10 percent. Your fixed instrument giving you anything between 7 to 8 and a half and your equities diversified mutual fund giving 18 percent. This is the kind of returns. Real estate, of course, as I told you, we are not able to tell you the returns because it differs state to state, place to place, dep depends on demand and supply. And of course, you know that real estate is not easily liquidatable as in when you need. So, I do not consider real estate as an investment avenue. Comparing these four items, I think equities is the best way for you to get long term returns if your horizon is 5 years and plus. So, could you tell our viewers how they could go about, you know, what are the things that they need to keep in mind when they go about uh, allocating their assets? First and the fo foremost thing after insurance what I have just covered is to keep a certain amount the certain amount depends on your uh, spending profile. What we say is around four months of your monthly expenses should be parked in a bank deposit, which means if something 
needs to be done urgently or in an emergency, you have access to this four months income to be spent. The balance should be spent, balance should be invested, sorry, in terms of your goals. If your goals, like I said, is 10 years, 15 years, all that money needed to reach that goal should be put in equities. It could be equities if you are directly aware of how to invest, if you are, if you are, if you have knowledge to invest in particular scripts. If not, the best way to invest is buying an equity mutual fund. And since most of the people start with a smaller amount and most of the people have a monthly income, it is always recommended to start an equity mutual fund investment through SIPs. You invest a certain fixed amount every month to build to look out for your goals and longer the duration, the more returns you get. But like I said earlier, equities have a risk. In the short term, you have seen equities going down also. You should have that risk taking capability that even if my investments do not give me any return or they are giving a negative return for the next six months or one year or two year, you will not feel perturbed and you will con you'll continue that investment. Then it will continue. Obviously, if your risk covers, you go to PPF, PF or FDs. But mind you, the net rate of return after inflation, there is 2%. Whereas when you look at equity funds, the history of the last 20 years will show you the net in rate of return is 10% plus. So this, will de this will define how you want to reach your goals and whether you could be a little bit more risk taking person to reach your goals. Okay, so now you've told us how we should go about. But many people uh, based on their goals, they do their asset allocation and they forget about it. What about rebalancing? When should they relook at the thing? Uh, you know, their assets. Should they go about doing rebalancing, or you know, just set your goal and forget it? You should rebalance, but it, it doesn't need to be done uh, frequently. I would say you need to uh, have a look at rebalancing maybe once in five years when you are young. As in how you get older, maybe once you cross your uh, uh, earning time. Then of course, maybe a little bit conscious rebalancing might be needed. But I think once in five years is a fair period where you need to rebalances your rebalances your asset allocation. Also, it but it also comes from a point how and how fast are you able to reach your goals. The moment you reach your goal, you are you are you are supposed to liquidate that investment, use it for your goals. So it automatically rebalances a certain portion of your net worth is supposed to be in debt instrument, either FDs or uh, debt mutual fund. As in how you age, that is the general thumb rule, it need not be applicable to everybody. As in how you age, your investments in riskier assets like equities come down and your investment in fixed instrument like FDs and debt instruments goes up. So, th like I said, the thumb rule is 100 minus the age. So, if you are at 30 years, 70 percent should be in equities. If you are at 50 years, 50 percent should be only in equities. And as and when you grow, if you are 70, only 30 should be in equities. This is the normal thumb rule. Of course, the actual calculation is based on your risk profile, your liabilities and all those things. There are people who are well set, who have at 80 years of age, have 80 percent in equities also. There are people who are conservative at 25 years of age, they are not able to take the risk they have 80 percent in debt. So, this is not, uh, this is, this cannot be a generalized theme. It all depends upon individual risk taking ability. What you have just told us has been very informative. Thank you very much for sharing your views with us. Thank you.